Hello people and welcome to another episode of Random Rambling and I like to apologize in advance because this video is late <laughs> by the time you're watching this so yeah since I just got a job and yeah I will explain it later on because there's a question about that and Inktober come into play so I'm not very good at multitasking stuff despite being a Hong Konger so yeah mm. but here I am so and today's episode is going to be the very um, exciting second episode of Q&A yay yeah again for your understanding and my um, answering I guess Q&A episodes will be in English so that everyone will be happy I guess yeah and by the way I got it on the laptop so so let me just move my laptop here I'm such a mess first two questions I guess ah so the first two questions the first one what kind of music are you into the second one how much weight can you bench press I don't know what bench pressing means so I'll look that up later but just do a the music question first. When it comes to listening to music, I am no expert by all means. Okay. Um, I don't even know the differences between rock music and metal music, so but what I do like is uh, I guess noisy music. But I do like some rather classy stuff. <laughs> How, how, how do you describe it? Like, musical? Not high school musical musical. Like, the... This is my favorite. And Ramin Karimlu, is, is, is this how you pronounce his name? It's awesome. Check him out. But the irony is, I've never listened to the songs by Iron Maiden and yet I have this shirt. <sighs> I, I am so sorry about that. Let's just say some of my favorite bands are The Pretty Reckless. I think everybody's gonna love some Green Day in their lives. And how do you pronounce it? Evanescence or Evanescence? Plus some K-pop, plus some Japanese anime theme songs and yeah, stuff like that. Okay, moving on. Bench pressing. The bench press is an upper body strength training exercise that consists of pictures. Oh, this one. As you can see, I am not a very gym kind of person. That means that I have no experience whatsoever on bench pressing. So I'd say the closest experience of weightlifting in my entire life uh, was the one time that I had to carry a 15 kg um, parcel from the place that I live and walk uphill for about like 15 to 20 minutes to the post office that it that is in my college in the campus of my college so yeah that that's it <laughs> okay next questions because this is getting awkward so next questions if it's not too personal what is your day job I mean when you're not talk drawing or talking about Cantonese what occupies your time I love to say YouTube videos and video games, but as what I just said um, in the very beginning of this video, I recently got two part-time jobs, and no, I am not being, you know, extremely um, hardworking and all that stuff. It's just hap it is just like happening to. Be I can work 
in sort of like two positions in the very same place. So the first job is I think I've mentioned it like somewhere in some videos that I made, um, which is a part-time Korean teacher. Yeah, so I'm still preparing handouts and notes and stuff. So that's one of the reasons why I say I'm quite busy, I guess. Um, and the other job is just primary school students tutor. I I don't think it's like tutoring because tutoring is you teach them something like I don't know English math specifically that's what I thought that's what I think at least but this one is more like I yell at them until they finished their homework and can go home that kind of tutor so I guess more of a supervisor that kind of thing you know like the gym if you're still biting your pencils and not doing your Chinese homework I'm going to call your mom and ask her to whoop your ass that that kind of thing okay n next question fourth one the fourth question what artist has been the most inspirational to your work and to those of you who only watch uh, my non-drawing videos or this is your first video looking at my face hello um yeah i do draw but i am not a professional artist because i i just don't have the opportunity to actually profit from my art other than making videos on youtube and hopefully they don't demonetize my videos. Thanks. Yeah, I draw stuff. And in terms of inspiration, I say is the Walking Dead mm, comic that inspired me to start this whole path as a more like horror, gore, macabre kind of mm, artist. If you're talking about a specific person, mm, that's quite difficult. Well, because I don't, I didn't go to any art schools or have it, have myself academically, academically trained as a painter or something like that. So I don't have a rich knowledge in terms of art history or something like that. So most of my inspiration, you know, artist-wise, comes from the internet. And recently, I find um, this lady, sorry for not knowing her real name, but her ID um, of Instagram is Crab Panther. That is Crab underscore Panther. So check out her work. She's awesome. Her work is pretty much the reason why I try to dabble on fleshy, more fleshy stuff like these days, like tentacles and stuff. Check out my Instagram if you don't know what I'm talking about. Next questions. Okay, this one is a long one. Basically, the idea is can you say more about the matching of tones and music in Cantonese? Well, being a Cantonese teaching channel, we have to put in one or two more sophisticated questions here, so let's do this. And I've done some research before answering this question because I don't want to talk out of my bottom. Please don't demonetize me because I didn't say the word as shit. Oh god, no. So in case you don't know, um, one of the very main criteria of songs in Cantonese is that you basically have to match the tones of the characters with the melody of a song. 
or else the thing things will go crazy and stuff. The world may end. Um, Garden will come early and stuff like that. Um, but despite what I've just said, there are songs that don't fit in this kind of rules. Um, they have unmatched tones with melodies. But those songs are acceptable because they are special. Um, maybe they are anthems for schools or organizations. The songs you sing in church when you're praising the God. The only mighty God, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, those are quite weird. I don't know why. Like, especially for the very OG, the hardcore ones. And the third one, there's like kids' songs. So, yeah. Maybe I'll leave some examples link in the description so you can check them out. But other than that, if you're just making, trying to make a beautiful canto pop song, then you must, um, match the tones with their melody. The reason is to make the songs understandable at first. If you mispronounce the tones in Cantonese, they can be wrong messages or wrong meaning and misunderstanding and stuff like that. Other than misunderstanding, it just ruins the whole song. It makes it not beautiful anymore. So and Apparently, how people, you know, place lyrics in a more efficient way is that they place something meaningless just for the sake of correct tones and pronunciation. And in those cases, numbers. Then they can use the numbers pronunciation to help them figure out which kind of tones they need, you know, the combination. And that's much faster than just guessing character by character. And I hope I am not just rambling nonsense and I actually answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> Next one, the last comment with three questions. What is your favorite horror movie? Hong Kong and Hollywood. Do you have a phobia? And on a typical day, which is higher, your protein or carbohydrate intake. So let's deal with the quest the question of um, horror movie. Well, I am not a very movie person. Is it how you say it? Like, yeah, I don't watch a lot of movies. Yeah, actually. Because I am a weird person and I like to keep going back to this, those that I have watched like a million times. That's how I grow up, I guess. I used to like just sit in front of the TV and watch Snow White, Disney Snow White for like a bajillion times and I would be pissed off if the TV is like turned off and I guess I still have that part of me like <laughs> till now. I don't have a, a Hong Kong's horror movie favorite that I have watched but I have heard that the movie Gang Si which is not vampire but Chinese kind of zombie. It is a very good movie. And the other one which is a more recent one is Sat Me. This one is for those of you guys who like gore other than spoopiness. I I'll leave the trailer in the description down below so if you want to check them out, go check them out. Is available on YouTube and don't worry they have English subtitles on the trailer so don't yeah but speaking of Hollywood movies well still the same I don't have many experience on movies um, horror movies mm. but I remember 
the very first Hollywood horror movie that I watched um, was The House of Wax. Yeah, the one with Paris Hilton in it. I, I, I remember I was like very frightened and almost traumatized by that. Next question, do I have a phobia? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. At least not the very typical ones. Um, I'm not afraid of clowns. I draw clowns. Um, I'm not that afraid of spiders. Yeah, I can, you know, be with spiders like within the same space. And what else? I am not that afraid of heights. You know, when when you go up to one of those tourist attraction um, tower that somehow people throw the tourists by building the floor with glasses with glass not glasses that be truly horrifying with glass um i don't i'm not afraid of those kind of things yeah it is a bit intimidating at first but then you get used to it um yeah, I'm not afraid of roller coasters as well. Mm. And I'm not afraid of dark. Because I'm a night owl, but I have to do it in a stealthy way. Uh, so, what else? And I'm not afraid to be alone. <laughs> Does the Fear of flying cockroaches count as a phobia? If yes, then that one. Okay, then the last question. Protein or cup? Like a good Asian that I am, I like me some rice. So, cup is like the main energy source, I guess. Sorry for not being able to vegan. Because who hate? Like, how, how can you say no to chicken? Like seriously, so being a, being a nation and a meat lover, I guess my protein and carb intakes um, half half. And let's call this a wrap of this video. Leave a like down below if you find my embarrassment amusing and you like it. Mm. Also, leave a comment down below if you have anything to say like you are one of us or you are shaking your damn head all the time, like the whole time. Uh, yeah. And also subscribe to this channel for more of this kind of embarrassment vlogs, um, Cantonese tutorial and, uh, and time lapse drawing. <laughs> yeah. And like yeah, all of those are weekly videos, so stay tuned. Um, I, I I'm going to ask you, you guys to 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 hit on that bell button. Yeah, get notified. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I've talked for like thirty minutes straight, so. Good luck with the whole editing, I guess.